the color wheel. Today, we're going to be learning all about the color wheel. We're going to remind ourselves what the primary colors are, the secondary colors are, and even learn more about color by talking about the tertiary colors. Let's get started. The primary colors red, yellow, and blue are the three most important colors because they make all the other colors on the color wheel. So when you add two primary colors together, you get a secondary color. For example, red plus blue equals purple, sometimes called violet. The secondary colors have to go between the two primary colors that make them on the color wheel. So for example, when you add yellow and blue together and it makes green, the only place green can go on the color wheel is between yellow and blue because yellow and blue make green. That is why the color wheel is always in the same order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Now the tertiary colors are made when you take a primary color and you mix it with a secondary color. So when we add in all the tertiary colors, the color wheel has six more colors. That's pretty cool. So it's really important to know how to mix colors to make new colors. So if I were to take purple or violet and mix it with red, I get a color called red-violet. Sometimes people call it red-purple. Red-violet, red-orange, yellow-orange, blue-violet, blue-green, and yellow-green are the six tertiary colors. They always go in between the primary and the secondary color that make them. The color wheel is always in the same order, no matter which way you look at it. It's in the order of the color spectrum. So what does color have to do with science? Well, everything, because color is science. It has to do with how our eyes see the wavelengths of color. White light is made up of all the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. When white light passes through a glass prism and the colors are broken into their individual wavelengths, that's when you see the whole rainbow. Sometimes when you see a rainbow in the sky, that's what is happening when white light from the sun is being broken into individual color wavelengths by passing through water molecules. That's pretty cool. And that's exactly the same as the color wheel. A rainbow can be remembered by Roy G. Biv, which stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. That is another way that you can remember the order of the color wheel. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Indigo is the only tertiary color in the rainbow. We are going to remember all the colors of the color wheel by making a really cool color chameleon today. So if you need to look back at the color wheel to help you remember, that is a great idea. We're using a chameleon because chameleons, as you know, live in rainforests and love to change color. They're a great animal to draw when you're learning about color. Let's see how to get started. All right, second and third grade friends, today we are going to draw our colorful chameleon. And if you have time, you're going to color it in. Um, we're using the chameleon because chameleons, as you know, change color. In um, the rainforest, they camouflage into their surroundings. It's a great little animal to use when you're studying color. We're going to start by um, making sure we have a pencil and a paper. You're going to need a black marker or a black crayon, something for outlining. And then markers and crayons are going to be your best friend, again, for this project. So in order to start this, you can see that it starts with a very large kind of curve or C shape on your paper. So the very first thing I want you to draw is you're going to go over to the left side of your paper and take your pencil and just a couple finger space from the top, I want you to start a very large C or curved shape that goes all the way to the bottom of the paper. I'm going to draw that a little bit darker so you can see it a little better. So do that. And then when you're ready, we're going to turn this into a spiral. Now it's important when you're doing the spiral that you end up with it being 
kind of like a big circle shape right here. You don't want to draw a spiral that's really small because then you'll end up with um, a tail that's not big enough to add color to. So then you're going to take the C and I want you to keep curving around, keeping that spiral nice and big. Curve it in towards the edge. Wrap it around and curve in just so like that. So make it nice and thick. Don't make it too small and skinny. And when you are done with that, then we're going to draw the rest of the body and the head. So you can see the head needs to come out from this direction, from the top of the C. You're going to curve it down just a little bit more. So the curve goes just past the spiral by about a hand width right here. And the head is kind of shaped like a triangle. If this shape is difficult for you, you could make it just into a large triangle facing that way. I like to think of it more as a triangle with curved lines. So I'm curving my line instead of making a straight line. And I'm curving this line here and curving this line here. And then, you know, chameleons have really big eyes that roll around in their head. So we're going to put a nice big eye there for him. And you can make the pupil facing any direction because um, chameleon's eyes will look out in many different directions. I want the chameleon looking towards me. So I'm going to put the pupil in his eye like that. And one of the things I love to do to make it look realistic is I just rub it a little bit, give it a little bit of a shadow around it, blend it in, make it look like a real eye. And then I want my chameleon to be a happy chameleon, so I'm going to give him a nice, relaxed, happy face. You can make your chameleon smile if you want to, or frown, or whatever kind of expression you think makes sense. But this guy's happy because he's changing lots of colors. So we're going to finish the body. Now the body has two legs on one side and two legs on the other side. But you can't see the other side of the body. You can only see one side. The back leg is um, wider and bigger than the front leg. So we're going to start with the back leg. And so just above where your um, spiral is, you're going to draw a nice big curved shape and you're almost going to make a circle but not quite. So make a nice big curved shape without completing the circle and then you're going to turn it out and make three little wiggly toes almost like something that you would see on a frog. These are cute little wiggly toes. Draw a curved line that's about a two or three finger space to the front leg. And for this one, because this is the front leg, it's not curving around back. It's actually a curved line facing front, kind of like the letter L, but it's bent a little bit. And then this front foot gets three little wiggly toes and curves up just a little bit like that. And then you can finish it off by just connecting the underneath side of the neck. And chameleons usually sit on some type of a tree branch. So we're going to go ahead and make a tree branch for him to sit on. So right underneath his body, I'm going to draw a couple of lines to indicate a nice wide tree branch here, just kind of bending. And then curve a couple of lines down here at the bottom to finish off the tree branch. And we can add lots of leaves and details later. Now let's talk about how to color this. Now sometimes when I'm doing the color spectrum, or as we love to call it in art, the color wheel, I like to use a blue that's a little brighter than this. If you have a blue marker that is a little brighter blue, you could use instead of the dark blue marker. So this color blue would also look really nice. Now if you wanna give yourself a really good challenge, you could do the tertiary colors in between the primary and the secondary. And remember, the tertiary colors are yellow-orange. So that's when you mix yellow and orange together. Let me find my yellow-orange marker. This one's sort of a goldish yellow-orange right here. 
and then red orange, which is when you mix red and orange together, and then yellow green, which kind of looks like lime, right there, and then blue green, which is like a teal, and then blue violet. And if you have a blue violet or an indigo, is what blue violet is called. I do not have a blue violet marker. I might have to use a blue violet crayon. Okay, so that is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Those are the primary and the secondary with red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, green, blue, green, and blue, violet in between. Those are the tertiary colors. The color spectrum does have all of those colors in it. Um, you see some of them brighter than others, and sometimes the color wheel will have the primary and the secondary only, and sometimes the color wheel will have the tertiary colors, but that is your choice. So quickly, a really easy thing to do before you get started is to kind of label where you want the colors. We're gonna section the chameleon off into different large sections using curved lines on the tail, going around the tail, all the way across the body. I like to make my sections nice and thick so that I have a nice big space to color my colors. I'm gonna skip around the leg, continue my curved lines, it, curved lines just look better on the chameleon than straight lines because his body is curved, so it makes sense to use curved lines there. Now, the fun part is to go through and label all of these so you know what color you're going to put where. Well, red is the first color, so I'm going to start, I'm going to do a very light colored R right there. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And then I would start over. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Now if I was going to do the tertiary colors to really give myself a challenge, I would start off with red, and then I would skip a space and write orange, and skip a space and write yellow, skip a space, and write green, skip a space, write blue, skip a space, write violet. Now why did I skip a space? Because I need to put in the names of the tertiary colors. So the names are, like I said, red, orange. So red, orange would be R-O. Um, yellow, orange would be Y-O, because the primary name always comes first. So that's red, orange, yellow, orange. Yellow, green, blue, green is BG, blue violet is BV, and then violet, and the last one right here is red violet, which is the same as magenta. Then I would start over again, red, right from the beginning, and I would keep going. So you can do either color wheel that you like, both look good, and when you're ready, we're gonna outline the whole chameleon with a black marker, and color in each space brightly to make it look magnificent. If you have time and would like to add details, it would look very lovely to add nice big green leaves and beautiful flowers in the background because chameleons do live in tropical climates where there's lots of big leaves and flowers and you will see me do that when the video speeds up. Have fun drawing today, boys and girls.